So uh, we are back to the Spirit's book. And uh, let me share here. Today, we start chapter four of book one. It's the last chapter of book one. Book one talks about God. Uh, we, we finished last week the creation, and now we are going to discuss the vital principle, which is uh, what animates life, uh, all types of lives, life. So, um, Philip, you're reading for us? Okay. Organic and inorganic beings. Organic beings are those that have an intrinsic source that produces life. They are born, grow, reproduce, and die. Their organs are specifically adapted to carrying out the different activities of life in order to satisfy their needs and maintain their existence. Humans, animals, and plants are all organic beings. Inorganic beings, possess neither vitality nor the power of spontaneous movement and are merely the aggregation of matter, such as minerals, water, air, and so on. Okay. So to start, <clears throat> Kardec gives us the definition of organic and inorganic beings, which is the basic definition that we need to study this chapter and differentiate between organic and inorganic beings. Organic beings, so as according to Kardec here, are those that are born, grow, reproduce, and die. So that includes humans, animals, and plants. And, uh, and we can include here all the, the types of animals and all the types of plants and all those in between. We know there are some, as, as a spiritual principle, we go from the mineral to the vegetable to the animal. Uh, and inorganic beings do not pos possess vitality and they are merely an aggregation of matter as Kardec says here. So they don't have um, life per se in terms of they don't grow, they don't reproduce, and they don't die. A rock is always a rock. It can be destroyed, it can be uh, divided, but it doesn't die. It becomes, you know, uh, other inorganic matter, but it still is inorganic and it's uh, it doesn't die. Everything that uh, is organic dies, okay? Does the same force unite the elements of matter in organic and inorganic bodies? Yes, the same law of attraction exists for all. Okay, so we studied in past weeks that everything that is not God or spirits slash spiritual principle derives from the uh, universal fluid or the cosmic fluid. So everything that is matter in organic and inorganic bodies derive from the universal fluid and follow the same law of attraction <clears throat> that exists for all matter or all things derived from the universal fluid, okay? And that's very important for us as, uh, so the basis is the same for us to understand what differentiates, okay? Which is the next question. Does the same force unite the elements of matter in organic and inorganic bodies? Yes, the same law of attraction exists for all. Can we read that also? 61, no. Is there any difference between the matter of organic and inorganic bodies? It is the same. The only difference is that in organic bodies, it is animalized. 
Okay, so here uh, Kardec starts, uh, the spirits start to bring the difference between organic bodies and inorganic bodies. Uh, the question uh, that Kardec asks the spirits is, is there is any difference between the matter and Kardec says the matter is the same. The only difference is that organic bodies are animalized. And then what is the cause of the animalization? Next question, Philip. What is the cause of animalization of matter? The union of matter with the vital principle. Okay. So now here we have the introduction of the vital principle, which is what animates matter. So when we talk about, uh, we go back to the beginning, when we talk about um, the organic beings, they have a source that produces life. They are born, grow and reproduce and die. What do they have that is different from inorganic matter? It's the vital principle. What animates matter, the vital principle, okay? Questions here. Any comments, questions? Okay, we're going through the basics here. Is the vital principle present in a specific agent or is it a property of organized matter? Simply put, is it an effect or a cause? It is both. Life is an effect produced by an agent acting on matter. Without matter, this agent is not life, just as matter cannot be alive without this agent. It gives life to every being that absorbs it. Okay. So here, Kardec asks, so we talk, you mentioned vital principle. So is this vital principle uh, a specific agent or is a property of organized matter? if it's a cause or an effect. And uh, the spirit's answer, it is both. Because life is an effect produced by this vital principle acting on matter. Without matter, this agent is not life. Uh, matter cannot be alive without this agent. So the vital principle gives life to every being that absorbs it. And we are going to see where does it come from now. Spirit and matter are two essential elements of the universe. Is the vital principle a third? There is no question that it is necessary for the makeup of the universe, but its source is a special variation of universal matter. For you, it is an element like oxygen or hydrogen, which are not primordial elements because everything derives from the same foundation. This statement seems to imply that vitality does not lie in a distinct primordial agent, but is a special property of the universal matter resulting from certain variations. That is the correct conclusion of what we have stated. So here, the spirits are telling us that uh, vital principle is not a third element of the universe. Vital principle also derives from universal matter. Its source is a special variation of universal matter. So, the universal fluid. Uh, that, and then they say that for us, it is an element like oxygen or hydrogen, which are not primordial elements because we know that everything derives or starts at the universal fluid, the same foundation. Uh, so then Kardec asks, so this is a special property of the universal matter resulting from certain variations? And the spirits answer, yes, that's correct. This is a little bit um, difficult in a sense to, 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 to grasp our head around because it's, uh, 
when we talk about everything coming from <clears throat> the universal fluid, everything that is not spirit, and of course not God, coming from the universal fluid. And then we have this vital principle uh, that animates organic beings. And, you know, how does it work? Where does it come from? These are all questions that uh, arise from these um, conclusions that we are having here, right? So uh, we are going to introduce the vital fluids shortly, okay? Uh, any questions so far, any, any doubts? Because it's all building blocks here. We're trying to build blocks so we, get, we, we understand uh, everything that we're talking about. Evidently not. Luis? No, I just think we, we have to remember that we are talking about a moment in time where, uh, you know, organic cells were barely known, where DNA was unknown, uh, where, you know, uh, uh, most forces that combine to, to uh, uh, provide the, the growth and the vitality, uh, uh, they were not intrinsically known. It was all sort of, you know, uh, uh, unknown. <laughs> so uh, there would be no language for the spirit at that time to explain, you know, vital principle in a better way. That's my opinion. It would be similar for a spirit to try to explain what a, a cell phone was. There was no vocabulary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's exactly that. And then, and again, uh, they do a very carefully um, uh, building blocks here for for us to to try to move from one step to another and understand. But uh, some of the things that uh, um, that the spirits bring here, I, if if it is difficult for us today to to wrap our head around it. Can you imagine 150 years ago? It must have been very hard for those first um, uh, uh, those that first start studying spiritism to understand this. Okay, Philip, the last one on this. In the beginning of 65. Sorry? I can see the beginning of, the, of 65. I know, uh, we already went through 65, right? No. No, oh, oh yeah, sorry, yeah. <laughs> <Go ahead>. yeah. <laughs> I was jumping ahead to the end of it already. <laughs> Does the vital principle reside in any bodies that we know? Its source is the universal fluid, which is what you call the magnetic or electric fluid, only animalized. It is an intermediary, the link between the spirit and matter. Yeah, so the spirit uses the vital fluid to animate matter. For those that are more interested in uh, studying a little bit uh, deeper, uh, chapter 13 of Evolution in Two Worlds, uh, Soul and Fluids, uh, Andrea Luis presents what are fluids in general and uh, and uh, and the fluid the vital fluid that animates uh, our our physical bodies and animates everything that is uh, alive um, it's a good source of study so um, it's important here this concept it's an intermediary the vital principle, the link between the spirit and the matter. Uh, it's what gives life to us, to, to organic beings, okay? Uh, so expanding a little bit, the intermediary, meaning when, when you, we are as a spiritual principle going through the vegetable phase, also, it, the, 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 the trees and the plants are animated by the same vital principle, okay? It's also the link that connects um, spiritual principle 
and the the vegetable king kingdom um, understanding that uh, a tree is not an individualized spiritual principle you the spiritual principle goes through the phase without being a specific plant we're going to study this later in this book okay continue yeah is the vital principle the same for all organic beings? Yes, but adapted according to each species. This principle gives organic beings the power of initiating movement and activity. They are distinguished from inert matter by their ability to produce spontaneous movement. Inert matter can be moved, but it does not initiate movement. So here, uh what does the vital principle does do for the organic beings? Uh, it gives the organic beings the power of moving themselves. Uh, a tree grows, an animal move around, even the most primitive animals. An inorganic matter or inert matter does not, does not move by itself does not produce spontaneous movement. Of course, it can be moved, but it does not produce spontaneous movement. So that's what vital principle gives to organic beings, okay? Next. Is vitality a permanent attribute of the vital agent or is it only developed by the functioning of the organs? It is only developed with a body. Have we not established that this agent does not constitute life without matter? The union of the two is necessary for life to exist. It is correct to say that vitality is dormant when the vital agent is not united with the body. Yes, exactly. The organs of the body together form a mechanism that is impelled by their intrinsic action and vital principle residing within them. The vital principle is the driving force of organic bodies, while the vital principle compels the organs in which it resides. The functioning of these organs further develops and sustains the activity of the vital principle in the same manner that friction develops heat. So here, what the spirits are telling us, uh, and also Kardec in the end, is that uh, the, this vital uh, principle or vital fluid exists by itself, but is dormant. It only acts when it is united with a body or a living, uh, a living, entity animates an organic matter so by itself it doesn't we doesn't exist or the, well it exists it doesn't work it's like the kardec says i see it is dormant and the spirits say exactly so that vital principle is the driving force of organic bodies and it's what makes the organic bodies to, to develop, grow, and to, to move. And uh, without the physical body, this vital uh, fluid doesn't do anything. Okay? All right. Um, I know it's a lot of... Uh, complex information here but any doubts here because now we're going to discuss life and death here please yeah sorry to to keep intruding but it, it always amazes me uh, how uh, uh, the codification matches with current science so all life that we know is based on dna Every living being is based on DNA, but DNA itself is not alive. 
DNA requires matter. So a, a virus, a, a DNA or an RNA-based virus is not alive. It will only be alive when it gets in touch uh, uh, with matter. So uh, uh, the description matches so well, in my personal opinion, what we know today uh, and uh, what science has, has taught us. And uh, uh, it, it matches well, maybe how you would explain to someone in a, with zero knowledge uh, uh, what is life, or how something is alive. I mean, it's amazing. Sorry, but uh, yeah. I, I like to point out those matches because I believe they are important solidifying what we think about spiritism yeah no um yeah i agree i thank you for yeah, the uh, what you bring because i think it's important also i you know we keep reminding uh, how this uh, how the spirits brought all this knowledge so way before we are learning and uh, you know i was reading that today nothing to do with what we're studying but uh, the, the scientists just, dis, just discovered a tiny particle that uh, could append the known laws of physics. Physics. I don't know if you guys read about it. Um, so, you know, it's the, the particle is called the muon and uh, is akin to an electron, but far heavier. And it doesn't obey the known laws of physics which is very interesting, you know, which was what uh, spiritism uh, uh, and, and especially Andrea Luiz in a lot of his books brings a lot of uh, notions advanced for, it, for its time that uh, science takes a long time to, to, um, to prove. And we've been studying um, the universe and the creation and, uh, and the, the matter and, and this only adds to what the spirits brings to us uh, that we are so far of understanding and knowing everything. So the spirits bring us the ideas, the basic ideas, and it's on us to develop and to conciliate what they bring. Uh, just a parenthesis on what we are studying here. All right, so let's talk about life and death now, because when we are talking about organic beings, we're talking about life, life and death. What causes the death of organic beings? the exhaustion of their organs. Would it be correct to compare death to the end of movement in a broken machine? Yes. When a machine is out of order, it stops working. When the body becomes ill, life withdraws from it. Okay, again, um, reminding what Luis said to us. This is 1857, 1860. Uh, the, the complete understanding of life and death uh, was still not very advanced as we, as we are today. And, uh, and I'm going to bring Elmo to talk a little bit about the, 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 the medical aspects of uh, death today, but uh, after the next question. But, um, you know, basically what the spirits are telling us here is organic beings die when their organs no longer work. No longer work the exhaustion of the organs, uh, organs, and they compare it with a machine. When a machine is uh, breaks, stops working. When the body uh, breaks, you know, life withdraws from it. Again, life does not cease to exist. Life withdraws from the organic beings that um, that were alive. Okay. Excellent. Why is an injury to the heart more likely to cause death than an injury to any other organ? The heart is a vital organ that keeps your body running. An injury to the heart is not the only type of injury that can cause death. It is just one of the gears essential to the smooth operation of the machine. Okay, so at that time, we thought that when the heart stops, uh, we, we died. 
now, and that's when I'm going to bring Elmo, we, are, we already have a different vision. Still, if the heart doesn't work, we die. That's, that hasn't changed. But we are uh, advancing in, in science, in medicine, uh, being able to even to live with, our, with an artificial heart and so on and so forth. And death today is not, um, is not established by the, the heart stop beating, but the end of activity of the brain. Correct, Elmo? Uh, yes. Well, going back to the previous question, there is a big jump, right? Because the, big, the first question deals with death of organic beings. And organic beings may be a fungus, may be a bacteria, may be a grass, may be a potato plant. All those things are organic beings. Okay? And some of those beings, those beings does not have organs just per se. It may be a organ it's by itself, right? <clears throat> so what's caused the death of those, those beings be the end of vitality, the, the, the um, vital fluid, you know, I mean, the battery is empty. When the battery is empty, the machine doesn't function anymore or is more function of the machine. But the machine may be a bacteria, maybe a fungus, maybe a unicellular, pluricellular, uh, organic beings. And then there's a big jump to the next question where we jump to the human body. So it's a huge, huge jump right there, right? And yes, I mean, any organ malfunction in our physical body may cause death. Okay, if your liver, if your kidney stop functioning, you're gonna die. If you if your liver stop functioning, you're going to die. If you if your intestine starts to move, if you lose peristalsis, you're going to die. But death is defined is when there is no more electrical um, activity in the brain. When a documented the, the cessation of electrical electric cephalic activity, but less than zero point zero 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 one percent of people who died, you you have their brain checked, right? Usually suffices to say you're not breathing, you're not your heart's not beating, you can declare you dead most of the time, all right? But the complete definition when necessary of death of the human body is the cessation of electric brain activity. But if you cut your pulse, you're gonna die if you don't stop blood, if you don't stop the exsanguination, you gotta, you're, gonna, you're gonna bleed to death. So there is many organs in this body that, in our body that when it's more functioning, gonna lead to our death. Um, and the, actually, we're talking about humans, but we can uh, expand this to, to animals, right? Uh, not all of them, but the mammals and the more evolved animals, types of animals also, um, the, 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 those that have heart and those that have, uh, you know, the functions that uh, are comparable to our functions will die in the same way with a, with a cessation of a uh, function of, uh, of some organs, right? Yeah, but that's go for even the plants and even others uh, beings, except for unicellular because they are only one cell, but they're still organic beings. And they also have organelles that allows them to live and die when they, when they misfunction. Why is an injury? Oh, okay. Our, yeah, yeah no, our, it's 70 now. Okay. What happens to the matter and vital principle of organic beings after their death? Innate matter decomposes and is used to form other bodies. 
the vital principle returns to the general mass. When the elements making up the organic being die, they blend in such a manner to form new beings, which in turn draw the principle of life and activity from the universal source. They absorb it and then restore it to the same source when they die. The organs, so to speak, are impregnated with the vital fluid, which enables all bodies' components to actively communicate with one another when certain injuries occur and to restore functions that have been temporarily suspended. However, when the elements essential to the functioning of the body have been destroyed or too severely injured, the vital fluid is unable to restore movement that constitutes life and the being dies. The organs react more or less powerfully upon one another and their mutual action results from their harmony. When this harmony is destroyed or disrupted in any manner, their functions cease just as a machine stops when its essential parts are out of order or as a clock stops when its gears are worn out or accidentally broken and in which there is no longer any motive force to keep it running. We have a better example of life and death in an electric device. The device, like all natural bodies, contains electricity in a latent state, but the electrical mechanism is only manifested when the fluid is set in a motion by a special cause. When this movement is induced, the device is said to become alive, but when the cause of the electrical activity ceases, the mechanism ceases to occur and the device is once again inert. Organic bodies are like an electric device in which the movement of the fluid provides the phenomena of life and in which the culmination of that movement results in death. The quantity of vital fluid pres present in all organic beings is not the same. It varies in the different species of living beings and is not always the same in the same individual or individuals of the same species. Some may be saturated with it while others have only very small quantities. Consequently, certain species have a more active and persistent life due to the abundance of vital fluid present in their bodies. The vital fluid contained in a given organism may be exhausted and become insufficient to support life unless it is renewed by the absorption of substances that contain it. The vital fluid may be transferred from one individual to another. For those who possess copious amounts, it may be given to someone else who is deficient. In certain cases, this may rekindle the vital flame when the verge of being snuffed out. Okay. Um, that's a lot of information here, right? So the first thing is, what happens to the matter and vital principle of organic beings after the death? Well, matter decomposes and the vital fluid is, goes back to the general mass or, or is dispersed in the universal uh, fluid or universal matter. So when uh, an organic body dies normally if it dies if it dies for exhaustion of the vital principle that exists in it so there is no vital principle left so the body or the matter decomposes goes back to nature uh, is used to form other bodies 
uh, and there is no vital fluid. Now, what happens when uh, you know someone died in an accident, or if someone dies when they have a lot of vital fluid? This vital fluid normally disperses into uh, the, the 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 universe. Let's say. Of course, um, we can uh, talk a little bit about uh, the, the, the what so what what's called vampirism, right? That is uh, the the spirits that uh, miss their life and their vital fluid that are around uh, those that uh, are in the process of uh, of dying or are dying to 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 try to feel the vital fluid in or in a way to make them feel alive again. It's not that the vital fluid is going to to make them uh, live again in the sense of an organic matter, but they miss the material life. They miss the activities provided by the vital fluid. So they may uh, go after the, the, the ones that are discarnating uh, or that still have vital fluid to try to absorb this vital fluid. But it's a different discussion. Uh, so Kardec here goes into the ex long explanation about the vital fluid and how the organs uh, impregnated with the vital fluid have the ability to, to, to repair some injuries and to restore functions. Uh, and we know uh, we have some examples and some knowledge, you know, the, the liver, for instance, if you, you cut a, 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 a part of the liver, it, it grows again. Uh, so it has the ability to, to re, rebuild itself. Other organs does not. And some organs injuries are fatal in the sense that they cannot be repaired and it causes the death of the physical body. Um, Kardec then compares uh, it to electric device, right? The, the example of life and death, which is an interesting comparison, saying that, uh, you know, your, your vacuum cleaner is there inert. It doesn't do anything if you leave it there. If you connect to electricity and you turn it on, then it becomes uh, alive in a sense, not really, but uh, it's animated by electricity. So that's the comparison that Kardec makes it here that organic bodies are like, like an electric device uh, where the fluid is the electricity that produces the phenomena of life. And, uh, and when this uh, fluid stops or ceases to exist, uh, it results in death. Now, one question here that is important to discuss also is the end of this. When uh, Kardec tells us that the vital fluid is not the same by uh, inorganic beings. One thing that we learn from spiritism is that we are all born with an amount of vital fluid enough for our expectancy of life. So before we come to an incarnation, if we are supposed to live, let's say 70 years, we are going to come with a certain amount of vital, vital fluid that uh, will allow us to live uh, for 70 years, a little more, a little less. Now, with our lives here, here in this planet, we can, um, uh, waste vital fluid by, you know, doing activities that uh, cause it, us to lose the vital fluid. And we can replenish, as they say here, uh, Kardec says here, renew by absorption, the absorption of substances that contain the vital fluid. And the vital fluid may be transferred from one individual to another. People that have magnetic abilities. You know, when we talk about passes, the passes are a spiritual transference of energy from the spirits to, 
to the pass, uh, the, from, uh, the, the one that is received in the pass. But there is always a magnetic component, and the more uh, ability, the more magnetic the, the, the pass giver is, uh, the more uh, he or she will be able to give some of their vital fluid to, um, to the one that is receiving. Uh, it is, you know, it, it is a complex subject because there is a lot of doubts on how this works. Um, we know, for instance, that even the spirits can help and assist us to get, get an extra uh, dose of vital fluid. And it is said that, for, for instance, that Chico Xavier received an extra 20 years of, uh, of life because of the work that he was doing here. So he was supposed to live for 70 years and lived until 90. So his vital fluid was replenished in a sense, right? Um, again, it's, uh, it's a complex subject, but... Uh, what is important is we have enough vital fluid for what is necessary for our life. We shouldn't be, how do we waste uh, vital fluid? We, well, all our vices, our abuses can, um, can waste these vital fluids, of course, uh, a certain amount and can cause us our life to be shortened. And, and again, some of these, it may not even be our own responsibility. Let's say you live on a very polluted place, right? You are damaging your physical body. You are consuming your vital fluids without much of, uh, without a lot of control on what you can do with it. Uh, we normally waste vital fluid during our lives with things that, uh, we are we were are not supposed to, but that's part of our uh, evolution and imperfection as uh, 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 evolution as imperfect spirits. Okay, um, I I know there is a lot here, so uh, comments, questions, Luis. Yes, question. Uh, uh, are you aware of any reference regarding the relation? of the peri-spirit to the vital fluid? Um, according to Andre Luiz in this chapter that I mentioned to you, 13 of uh, Evolution in Two Worlds, um, it says that the peri-spirit is, is the one that um, absorbs the, the universal fluid transforming in vital fluid and animating the, the physical body um, that is born in its own soul. Uh, it's a subproduct of the cosmic fluid that is abs absorbed by the human mind uh, in, in a process that is very similar to breathing. Uh, by the way, the, 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 the spirit assimilates the, the creators, uh, the force that comes from the creator and under its own responsibility, transforms into, animates the, the, the body. Uh, it's the, the, it says here that uh, it's our own continuous thought, this life fluid. Uh, again, it's, it's on evolution in two worlds, chapter, 13 of the first part, okay? Um, Elmo, I don't know if you have any additional comments here on this question. No, I have to read that chapter myself. Okay, yeah, it's complex then. Okay. Uh, Paco, you're on mute. Now, I have a question. Can I can I conclude that death is a cessation of the cosmic fluid, the vital principle? Um, yes and no. In the sense so when, that when yes and when no. Yeah, because if the vital fluid uh, ends, it yeah. causes the death. Yes. Okay. 
but death can be caused, you know, if you have an accident, you are full of, a, of vital fluid, but you die because of an accident. So it's not a cessation of a vital fluid. It's just uh, the, 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 the physical body is armed enough that it can no longer function. And then uh, the vital fluid is still there, but it cannot animate the body because the body doesn't function anymore. Understood? The second part is kind of difficult because the first one, I'm talking in sense here, a natural death would be the, a depletion of the vital yes. fluid. But Correct. in the second, a, a, a depletion, a gradual depletion of the vital fluid. In the second example of an accident, and the person dies, there must be some kind of, the vital fluid might be there, but there's something, uh, some kind of a force that makes it stop into the flow of the vital fluid. It's not that, yeah. that he has it, it's that it, it, also, it also stops. Yeah, the organs, the affected organs stop working and without, uh, you know, it's the, the physical body breaks wherever it breaks, stops working. So the vital fluid may still be there, but the, 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 the physical body stops working. Well, in the, in the first case, is a depletion. In the second, in the yeah. second case, it, it is that the vital fluid becomes inoperational. No. It's... <laughs> No, it's not because, because, because the organ is not able to receive it. Yes, exactly. Okay, the, so, the vital okay. fluid can no longer animate the physical exactly. body, and then it's it's dispersed into the into into nature or into exactly. back it goes, into it the goes, universal it goes back, fluid. It goes back into the vital into the vital principle. Yes. Now I got yeah. it. In the first one is depletion, and the second one it becomes inoperational due to the damage of the organs. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um. You know, a, 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 a live example of how the vital fluid continues to animate a living body even after uh, for a certain time. If you cut the the tail of a salamander, right? Have you ever did the, did this experience when you were you know a kid? In biology, uh, the tail the tail continues to move by itself for some time, right? That's the vital fluid. Acting exactly. But until then, it's but dispersed. Then, exactly. But the organ itself yeah. becomes unoperational. Yes, I got it. Yeah, that's yeah. that's how I look at it. One is depletion, yeah. and the other one is inoperational. Yeah, Johnny. Luis. Yes. Uh, I'm checking here the book. Did you say chapter thirteen of part one? Yeah. Uh, spirit and fluids. It's probably in English. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I just can't find the. Uh, that's the reference, but uh, I'll find it. Thank you. So I have a question here uh, on the chat. Is, is there a link between vital fluid and DNA codification? Yeah, I don't what? know the answer. Luis, do you? What? Between, between uh, what and what? Vital mm -hmm. fluid and DNA codification. Uh, I, I don't think anything regarding that is actually written in the spiritual literature. Uh, so anything I say is my personal opinion. And I, uh, I, I don't think I know enough to give a personal opinion about this, but there are interesting similarities. I would stop there. Yeah, I, I don't know, really know uh, anything about it. Elmo, you don't know anything about it, I imagine also, right? Or do you? Uh, I agree with Luis. There is no information in the books, but I, no, I would say no. I would say that uh, the vital principle is way, way before, a lot more primordial than the DNA itself. And the, and the vital fluid is a lot more primordial, is, and, and the, the vital principle is a lot more primordial, way before the vital fluid. So I think uh, it's a big jump from, from vital fluid to DNA. And our science, both spiritism and our biology are far from understanding, or at least yeah. to be being revealed to us. But like Thanks. Louis, it's just my opinion. Only has the value of an opinion. Johnny, once Elmo brought this up, uh, could you 
say a little more about the differences between the vital principle and the vital fluid? Elaborate a little about it, maybe? The, the, the vital principle is the, the origin. The vital fluid is what animates the physical body, right? It's the product of the vital principle. Um, that's my understanding. Uh, is, am I correct, Elmo? I'm, I'm choosing to be silent because um, what I am going to say, it's not agreeable with the book. And we are, present, we are here present a book, okay? So I want everybody to, to listen, who is listening to me now to follow the book and all what I'm saying, okay? But in some other researches, in some other books, and I agree with the authors that the, the vital principle actually comes from the, the side of the intelligent principle is, so there is God, there is universe cosmic fluid, and the, there is intelligent principle. The, the vital principle derives from the side of the intelligent principle. And, and that intelligent principle in, a, in association with the cosmic fluid forms the uh, vital fluid, okay? And we could go deep on this discussion, but it, we could, but it would be a lot more confusing for everyone, including myself. And I choose to be silenced because again, it, that's not what the spirits are telling the spirits book. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't have anything to add here. Also, I, I know there is conflicting literatures, and uh, we, I, I, you know, there are, there are some literature that you find that says that the vital fluid cannot be replenished, and uh, according to what we read here in the spirits book, it can. But I know there are some, some spirits that uh, tell us that it cannot. That uh, was what is lost is can never be replenished. I I clearly see here Kardec saying that um, the vital fluid can be transferred from one individual to another. Yes. But even with that, there are some people that say that it cannot. So you know, it's a uh, a lot of uh, information here. Um, but I I think it's great to have these discussions because we are actually decoding messages that were given to us by more advanced spirits in a different moment in time. So these discussions allow us to, to learn, to comprehend, and to have a better understanding of what is in there. So uh, uh, I, I love talking about it. Yeah. Um... Absolutely, that's why we're here. That's what we're here for, right? And that's the idea for us all, for all of us to learn and to, to understand better. It doesn't mean to fully understand, you know, because we are, we're not able to fully understand things yet. So I have another question here that can, I think that the vital principle is the charger of vital fluid. There is a portion of vital principle packed like a battery for an animated, to animate a body. Again, uh, it's a valid theory, but I don't know if that's uh, that's correct or not. It's, uh, but I wouldn't discard this theory. Okay. So um, I'm not going to the next item, which is uh, also a very complex one: intelligence and instinct. And I want to leave it this for next week because I want to be able to discuss uh, with more time uh, and we have four minutes only. So any other questions related to vital principle, vital fluid, life, death, we have four minutes. Hey John, can you hear me? Yes, Renato, go ahead. Uh, what happened with the donor of the vital fluid? Uh, the, as, as Kardec says here, some individuals are uh, 
saturated with vital fluid and they are able to, to donate without causing any, any harm to themselves or they are able to replenish it. Um, you know, mediums of physical effects use a lot of vital fluid for the phenomena and they become depleted after uh, the, the pro pr production of physical phenomena. And that's why a lot of mediums of physical effects that don't know how to, to control themselves ended up, uh, you know, uh, using ways of replenishing it that are not very uh, healthy in a way, okay? Like uh, we, ha we had these famous cases of mediums that uh, used, uh, you know, alcohol, sex and other things. Um, so, you know, the, but the ones that are using it, remember, the ones that are using it for the assistance and help of others are going to be assisted by the spirits, the protecting spirits in helping them replenish their energies, replenish their, their vital fluids. Uh, just one. Of, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead, please. The replenishment of the, of the vital fluid does not mean that you are uh, 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 getting in the, in the way of the, the uh, um, to make your, your physical body to get old, for example. So no. you replenish, you replenish, no. your, so, so what's the purpose of replenishing that or getting more vital fluid? Because, you know, once your body has, I don't know, 80 years old to last year, doesn't matter if you spend all that or not, you're, you're, you, got, you got to go, right? Not necessarily, right? Um, uh, we can, uh, the, 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 our life span here can be changed according to our, uh, our behavior, our, our actions, and the vital fluid can be replenished to allow us to live more. Yes. Elmo, you're going to say something, so let me give to you now. Yeah, no, I agree with you uh, on that point. I mean, the, if someone receives an extra load of vital fluid is with the intention of prolonging the period of incarnation. And that will depend on, I, I understand the two primarily factors. One, what are you doing here that deserves, that gives you the, that credibility to extend it a few more years? Or what is it that you need to learn and you have the potential of learning here now before you go back that makes sense to expand you plan for, I don't know, a couple, a couple of years more or so. So to receive more fluids, which, which is primarily the intention of prolonging uh, that present reincarnation. But what I'm gonna say is that uh, if I am not really comfortable saying things that go contrary to what the spirits are telling us in these studies when we present the studies book, uh, I think when we do a Q&A, bring your questions, because then we are not studying a book, and I'll be more relaxed, I guess everyone will be more relaxed to give opinions based in all the different literatures that you had uh, seen. Thank you. Anything else, Luis? Sure, if we have time. Uh, not going against Elmo, but because uh, it's not actually in the book. Uh, question is, there's a clear association between vital fluid and our corporeal life. So question is, uh, can we say that when we are ethereal spirits, although we have a perispirit, that our vital fluid count is zero. We have no vital fluid when we are ethereal spirit. When we are in the spiritual world. Yeah, according to the spirits, the vital fluid animates organic matter. So if we are in the spiritual world, we don't use vital fluid, okay? 
but there is, and, and if you read that chapter that I mentioned to you, Andrea Luis mentions about the, the life fluid in the uh, in the spirit in the spiritual world, but I'm not going to go there because it's a, little, a lot more complex. But and uh, actually, yeah, actually we ran out of time here. So yeah, and, yeah. and that book is very complex. Uh, it's yes, not your, exactly. your everyday Andrea Luis book. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so, all right, so before we stop here, a um, couple of things. Uh, Jussara is giving a lecture this Saturday, the lecture from, from the United States Spiritist Federation is by Jussara. Uh, she's going to talk about Dr. Bezerra de Menezes. Uh, uh, so if, uh, if you want to know more about the uh, Dr. Bezerra de Menezes, which was a former president of the Brazilian Spiritist Federation in the beginning of the 1900s, actually before the 1900s, because he discarnated in 1900, exactly. And uh, he was, he's one of the most important um, protecting spirits of the spiritist movement in Brazil and the, found, the, the spiritual founder of the medical, uh, spiritist medical association. Uh, so if you want to learn more about him, uh, please watch Jussara's lecture Saturday, 11 a.m. And our big celebration this Sunday, we have our, our 20th anniversary. And as you have, should have seen in our, in our email, we have a uh, starts at 11 a.m. and it's going to have me, Jussara, Elmo, Soraida, Philip, Paco, other members of SGNY uh, talking about spiritism, about SGNY, about the importance of spiritism center, the importance of spiritism in our lives, in each one's lives. So it's, it's going to be a mis mixture of conversations, uh, presentations, and um, and uh, uh, it will be, the last one will be a conversation be between Jussara and Aloysio that she's going to talk a little bit more about uh, the spiritist movement and how she she come to be a spiritist and everything. So you are all invited. It's from eleven to four. Uh, it's a I know it's a long uh, event, but uh, you know it's it's going to be very fun and uh, it's directed to all of us that are part of SGNY. Of course, we're inviting people that do not come to our meetings, but uh, it's for all of us that are part of SGNY so we can share uh, this uh, anniversary of SGNY. Okay, so please join us this Sunday at uh, 11 a.m. Okay, so Carol, can you do a final prayer? Sure, thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, Elmo. Thank you, Luis and everyone. Okay, let's take a deep breath. <laughs> uh, infinite creator, first cause, we are grateful to be together this evening for our study of the Spirit's book, chapter four of the vital principles. We are learning about the organic and inorganic beings, life and death, that which surrounds us, the fluids, the vital fluids the cosmic fluids, for which we are still going into a greater detail in depth in which there are many things yet to be discovered. However, we, we maintain our vitality and growth as we learn about it through Allan Kardec's writings. We are grateful to be together this evening through the means of Zoom and the connectivity, which helps us to create a unified field, a unifying force among ourselves, our group, our city, our world, and our planet. We are truly grateful for the opportunity for which we are, have availed ourselves. We give thanks to the spiritual benefactors of SGNY, the mentors, the healers, those who are with us to help us, the good spirits, may we be thankful and grateful for all that they have done to, to help us go forward. We ask humbly to continue with our prayers, with our studies and our mindfulness throughout the week. May we do good works, may we be of service, 
as we study and grow together. We humbly ask now to close this portion of the meeting. We invite the love and light of Christ and the inner peace to be with us. May we celebrate our studies together. May we continue the journey. And may we always try to share our knowledge as we are able to do so through discernment with those who are receptive. We ask for safety and protection the guidance of the good spirits to go with us as we close. May we re receive this light, may we receive the goodness, and may we share it with others. We close now, and please go safely to your family, friends, loved ones, and co-workers. Be beacons of light and go in peace.